Well, today is World Health Day with a key focus on nutrition and food security. But to tell us more about this is David Harrison. He's the CEO of DGMT and he joins us for more on this. David, thanks for your time. Uh, the link between eating better and uh, better economic growth. Talk us through it. Well, you know, we're missing a massive opportunity and that is that 40% of children in, in Africa are stunted. Uh, that means that they're not growing to their full potential. They're not re reaching their height for age. Um, and what many, many studies have shown across the world is that children who are stunted perform worse at school and they perform worse at, uh, in, in work. They don't get work they, and their wages are much, much lower. Um, so if we could seize that opportunity, if, if we could ensure that our children are not stunted, um, that 40% uh, uh, were able to get the food that they required, um, probably the GNP in South Africa, studies show, would, would be about 10% higher than it is today. David, what I'm quite interested in is, is the whole idea of, of say, GMO, um, you know, genetically modifying basic foodstuffs in order to provide more of nu this nutrition that you're talking about. What is your sense? What is GMO? Is it, is it the friend or is it the foe? Is this something that is being imposed by imperialist Western world on, on poor, starving African children? Or is this really the solution for an, an, an ongoing and long-standing nutritional deficiency in Africa? Well, I'm not an expert in, in GMO, uh, but I can say this, and that is that we know that micronutrient deficiency is a major, major challenge uh, on the continent. Uh, we know that uh, children are not getting enough folate, they're not getting enough iron, they're not getting enough vitamin A. Um, and um, and so, so what we have to do at the moment is we have to try and fortify those foods artificially. We need to bring that those fortifications into normal foods. So my own view is that innovation is important, that we, without losing the inherent seed crop of the continent, we also have to find ways to strengthen the nutritional value of that, of that food, and particularly to bring in the type of micronutrients that I'm speaking about. That's probably, that's probably together with breastfeeding, the most significant uh, uh, intervention that we can make to change the lives of children. Mm. Uh, David, just looking at uh, the statistics around Africa and African growth, uh, our GDPs have been growing, but uh, with the rising middle class and the rising Africa, are we seeing people make better food choices or better nutritional choices? Yeah, but I think that we need to understand that this is also not just about choice. Um, that for, for many, many people uh, in South Africa and in Africa, uh, there simply isn't a choice. Um, and there simply is not food on the table. And, uh, and I think that that is the first and the biggest challenge that we have to face. Um, you, you know, w in, in, in Africa, since 1990, the rate of stunting has only declined from 50% to 40%. So let's just understand what that means. That means that 40% of our children in Africa are not getting enough food at all, let alone choice. Um, and, and, and that is going to affect the GNP of the country for the next 20, 30, 40 years, of the continent for the next 20, 40 years. So, so, so the first thing we have to do is understand the fantastic opportunity that presents itself. You know, we think of Africa as a resource-rich country. Our biggest resource are our children. And, and if we can simply maximize that resource, it's not going to cost us money to get minerals out of the ground. Simply food in their mouths is going to dramatically improve the, the gross domestic product of Africa over the next decade. David, do you think we're doing enough from a logistics point of view in actually getting the food that is being cultivated on the African continent to the people that need it most, meaning the people of Africa, rather than, again, exporting like we do with so, other of, uh, so many of our other commodities? Yeah, I think that's one of the real big problems, that, that, uh, that food security is being compromised in the interests of cash crops. Mm. Um, and, and that's what we've seen across Africa, is that until we put our people first 
and understand the economic benefit of doing that, mm. um, we're going to continue to lose out as a continent. And yeah. so we have to stop being so, so short-termist. We've got to find ways to think as a continent of how we protect the interests of our people and understand that that ultimately is going to have much more significant and much greater economic prospects than, than simply the short-term cash crops that we're investing in at the moment. David, thanks so much uh, for that. That was David Harrison. He's the CEO of DGMT 